hard-working farmer. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever-glorious book, it is he who produces both trellised and untrellised garden, date bombs, crops of diverse flavors, the olive, the pomegranate, alike yet different, different. So when they bear fruit, eat some of it, being what's due on the day of harvest, but do not be wasteful. Allah does not like wasteful people. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the Day of Judgment. Agriculture is one of the most important economic pillars for building and destabilizing of nations. It is the key to food provision and sufficiency. When contemplating the glorious Quran, one finds that the Almighty Allah has mentioned agriculture more than one time as a sign of its importance. Allah says, There are in the land, neighboring blood's garden of vineyard, cornfield, palm trees. He, glory be to him, also said, Do not consider how we drive rain to barren land and with it produce vegetation from which their cattle and themselves eat. The Islamic Sharia states that agriculture is a form of worship. The Islamic Sharia states ag that agriculture is a form of worship that gives a reward for the one who practices it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Never does a Muslim plant a tree or cultivate land and birds or a man or a beast eat out of them, but that is surety of his behalf. Our Prophet ﷺ also guided us to continue practicing farming to the last moment of life. Our Prophet ﷺ also guided us to continue practicing farming to the last moment of life. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, if the final hour comes, while you have a shoot of plant in your hand, and it's possible to plant it before the hour comes, you should plant it. One of the manifestations of the value of agriculture that the Islam makes it one of the ongoing charities whose reward extends after one's death. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Seven things, very important hadith. Seven things continue to accumulate reward for the slave while in his grave after his death. Knowledge he taught, the canal he dug, the well he drilled, the date bomb tree he planted, a mosque he built, a mushaf he donated. A mushaf he donated and a child who asked forgiveness for him after his death. This is because a farmer participates in developing life and that he does not live solely for himself, but he provides goodness for his city and the homeland. A farmer who works diligently has a great status and position as he contributes to the strength and stability of the nation and the creation of a job opportunities for his fellow citizens. A nation that does own its food cannot independently make its own decision. A nation does not own its food cannot independently make its own decision. By diligently performing his work, a farmer achieves prosperity for himself and his nation through his high spirit and sincere sacrifices. The Almighty Allah says, the Almighty Allah said, take action. Take action, God will see your actions, as will his messenger and the believers. And then you will be returned to him 
who knows what is seen and unseen. And he will tell you what you have been doing. A farmer follows the instruction of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, Oh Allah, bless my people in their early mornings. A farmer who works diligently does not depend on randomness, but he works according to a concept, but he works according to conscious planning. A farmer who works diligently does not depend on randomness, but he works according to a conscious planning, using the means of science, using the means of science. When contemplating the story of Prophet Joseph السلام, in the glorious Quran, one realizes a planning project for agriculture economy founded by Prophet Joseph. After he realized through a true dream from Allah that there would be a food crisis that will, be, that will affect the whole region. Therefore, he proposed and implemented a reform plan which carried goodness and blessing for Egypt and surroundings, surrounding region, which carried goodness and blessing for Egypt and surrounding region. Allah glory be to him said, Joseph said you will sow for seven consecutive years as usual, store all that you reap, left in the air apart from the little you eat. After that you will come seven years of hardship which will consume all but a little of what you stored up of what you stored up for them. After that will come a year when the people will have abundant train and will press grapes. A farmer. A farmer who work diligently also consult the people of experience and competence. A farmer who works diligently also consult the people of experience and competence in agriculture in order to be able to provide a high quality product that benefit his country and society. In compliance with this, with the saying of the Almighty Allah, Allah said, ask those who have knowledge if you do not know. He followed the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, when he said about agriculture, you have better knowledge. <clears throat> when he said about agriculture, you have better knowledge of a technical skill in the affair of the world. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all world. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his companions and followers. A farmer who works diligently is a loyal patriot, and his patriotism drives him to play a role in resisting attempts to raise and demolish agricultural land or build on it, which result in a crop shortage and increase in imports, which is a burden on the state. This is a harm prohibited by our Prophet, peace be upon him, who said, there should be no harm. A farmer who worked diligently also worked driven by his patriotism in marketing his crops after harvesting without delay or monopoly. He does not exploit people crisis. He does not exploit people's crisis or their suffering. He does not exploit people's crisis or their suffering. Islam has forbidden all forms of monopoly and putting people in crisis. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "If anyone, if anyone withholds grain for forty days, thereby desiring a high price, he has renounced Allah, and Allah has renounced him." We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to save our country Egypt 
and all other countries of the world. Thank you.